Well, I think I'll um, I'll get going. Thank you all for joining us today. This is um, going to be one of our last. Well, this is in fact our last webinar of the calendrical year. Um, we've done over over thirty this year, which has been a, a newfound and exciting commitment we've we've made. Um, and opening up the content to everyone, uh, you can retrospectively go on to our past events page, and you'll see them all there. The recordings and collateral. Um, of each and every session, and that will be no different uh, for today's session. So we thought we'd finish the year um, by reviewing um, progress um, on Project REARC um, with Jordan Mitchell from the IAB Tech Lab. Um, and as a part of that, you'll, you'll get a sort of oversight of the general state of play of, I, of identity, uh, the progress on the submissions and how we're looking as the project evolves. So um, there is an opportunity to ask questions. Please do um, through the through the tool that we have um, here on the Zoom platform. I'll have a couple lined up for Jordan as well. But for now, I'd like to hand over to Jordan Mitchell, who is the uh, SBP Head of Consumer Privacy, Identity and Data, IV Tech Lab, and he's always been so supportive of us here in in uh, both well Australia but across the region. Um, on numerous topics, including this. Thank, Thank you. you so much, JJ, uh, and uh, uh, wonderful to be here uh, from uh, Wednesday, December 9th. Um, so uh, let me get going here and let you carry on with uh, your holiday parties, hopefully. Uh, and uh, let's see. So today I'm going to give a little bit of a refresher on Project REARC uh, and, and give some updates on uh, accountability and addressability, addressability from the related working groups. And then uh, with full respect to a lot of different things happening in this area, I think, uh, you know, there's a number of states of play uh, to update on. Uh, we all know about the UID2 proposal from the trade desk, and, and I'd like to say a few words on that. Uh, there's a partnership for responsible addressable media that you may have heard about. Uh, and uh, uh, tell you a little bit more about that and what's going on there and why that's important. And then W3C, of course, uh, a venue where so much of the web standards are, are, are built, but now also where the Chrome discussions and privacy sandbox is happening. And I'll give you a, a real chuckful update uh, in, in that uh, area as well. So uh, some of the key takeaways to start off with is that, you know, of course, the systems that run digital advertising uh, and, and, and all transactions there have a core dependency on third-party identifiers to support the addressability uh, use cases, even uh, you know, uh, things like privacy, measurement, attribution, uh, frequency capping, uh, every, so many different things, not campaign optimization, and those are being removed, those, those, those cookies, those device IDs. Uh, and so we have to re-architect how we do things. Uh, things are changing uh, uh, for us. And we have to really focus on privacy preservation for consumers at the center of it. And the, the solutions are basically tech standards. That's what's being broken is tech standards. So we need to create new tech standards that fuel increased competition moving forward. Short-term workarounds uh, is only going to fuel the narrative of, of uh, the large platform, the browser OS platforms that are moving forward with these changes um, and exacerbate the problem. So until our industry really matches the consumer approach around privacy and that sentiment, um, uh, talk, talking the talk and walking the walk, uh, uh, we won't have a long-term solution, which is what we all want. And Tech Lab is really focused, uh, heads down focused on collaborating with so many of the business partners globally and policy partners globally towards these standards for uh, some, some, some of these things here, and, I'll, and we'll talk more about that uh, shortly. But we're really talking about an open ecosystem, and we all, as consumers and all, as business people, uh, we value that every single day. We've seen with open standards, um, amazing innovation in consumer content services um, and conveniences that we get to choose, that we as consumers get to choose uh, where we focus our attention uh, and what first parties we rely on and, 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 and trust. And for those first parties, uh, they have a rich set because of the interoperability of open standards. 
they have a rich set of third party vendors that can kind of patch together to support all of the first party business models um, and use cases and activities. Uh, but what we've seen with this open ecosystem, with open systems comes open sharing of data, unfortunately. And so all the different parties involved in the deliverable of these one, in, in, involved in delivery of these wonderful consumer experiences uh, uh, get access to certain uh, bits of data, the breadcrumbs of our activities, so to speak. Uh, and so there's a lot of opaque consumer data collection sharing and use here. Uh, and um, the first party is those who have earned our relationship as consumers. Uh, they're, they're rightfully concerned that uh, there's, there's that valuable data and that consumer relationship that they have worked very hard is leaking beyond them into to other parties. Uh, and the consumers are concerned because they don't know where the data is going. They don't know how to control it as well. So this has been sort of building up for some time now. And, and finally, the browsers have just taken the approach, okay, uh, we're just going to cut off third-party access. And this has been in the makings uh, for some time now, but this is the, 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 the final, uh, uh, the final uh, nail in the coffin is being uh, done in, in, in roughly a year's time significantly hampering core business uh, activities. Uh, but even worse, uh, these parties are, this is a commercial endeavor on there. They're, they're for-profit companies with shareholders like many of us, uh, not me, um, uh, you are all uh, members are my shareholders. But these companies, uh, they're, they're making decisions on behalf of consumers. Uh, and they're really establishing uh, custody over the consumer privacy in a way that is not uh, educating them, allowing them to make a decision. It is making decisions on behalf of, of them and fracturing some of the open standards. It's breaking open standards. Uh, and we think that this approach is going to further confuse uh, consumers. If on every different device, if on every different stream, um, if uh, we have our Wi-Fi provider, our internet service provider, uh, at different apps, all providing different uh, 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 privacy controls or making decisions on our behalf to protect us, then eventually they all start to uh, 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 confuse us as consumers, and, and that's no good. So our approach is it, we have to focus on predictable, standardized consumer privacy. It's up to us as consumers and the first parties that we choose to engage with. Uh, and to do this, we need to, this is where standards come in. We need to standardize the signals for how consumers' privacy preferences um, are recorded and propagated to all parties across all devices and all channels. And then for first parties uh, who are concerned about data leakage, they need to provide standardized signals as well for any, anyone that they work with. Hey, here's what's okay, here's what's not okay. And then the rest of the supply chain needs to really work hard to secure those IDs, secure personal data from unauthorized or, or illegal use. This is how we establish supply chain trust um, by having auditability and accountability. And this is how we make for predictable privacy experiences for uh, consumers. So that's our, that's our approach here. And we've got um, a lot of folks involved uh, with the Tech Lab working groups. Tech Lab is, of course, uh, a global organization. Uh, many of us are, uh, while, while uh, many of us uh, live in the U.S., we work with many different countries, over 41 of the 47 uh, IABs and other trade orgs um, across the globe, um, in, including this Partnership for Responsible uh, Addressable Media, which is, it itself contains uh, some of the leading global uh, advertising and, and marketing and agency brands. Uh, and we've just got hundreds of companies involved, and we've been going through a process, a pretty methodical process. Let's get everyone level set on the problem uh, and in business terms and policy terms and technology terms and the business impact when you remove identifiers. What are the dependencies? And then, let, and then uh, right now we're looking at, uh, and for the last couple months, what are some technology alternatives that we should be exploring? We've had a number of, of, of companies and, and different uh, proposals presented within uh, our groups um, to where we're getting pretty darn close to, uh, in certain areas, solution design. Here are the standards that we need. Here are the accountability mechanisms and programs that we need. Uh, so we're sort of like nearing the end of phase two. Um, in Q1, we'll be full on 
uh, uh, phase three, uh, designing the solutions for fee more feedback from within the industry. And the proposals that we're looking at here on the addressability side really focuses on, uh, you know, okay, well, we started with uh, pseudonymous identifiers and we're gonna continue to have pseudonymous identifiers for some time. Uh, they're available but diminishing. And it's moving to an authenticated web um, or an anonymous uh, uh, web um, and app system and, and streams. Um, this is not just a, a, a web challenge, this is multiple channel. Uh, but we, we'll, see, we'll see the same. Sometimes we won't get that IDFA. In fact, a lot of times we won't get that, I, that IDFA or that, that, that mobile uh, advertising uh, ID from any number of platforms. So there's this movement towards authenticated. So we're looking at that quite a bit. The key linchpin here is accountability in our opinion. Uh, uh, accountability and auditability gives us the leverage uh, to both on the regulatory front and with these large uh, browser OS platforms who are making these changes. It allows us to go to them and really focus on that sentiment of consumer uh, predictable privacy. Um, and without accountability, we won't have any one-to-one -one addressability in our opinions. And so I'll talk to that in, in, uh, right now, actually, because we've got uh, on that front, uh, very, very important, we've got four pieces of work coming together uh, in, in terms of ask, answering the question, how do we um, establish supply chain trust and accountability by consistently demonstrating with data that uh, the industry, the supply chain can be held accountable, um, can adhere to the consumer's rights and preferences, um, including first party preferences as well. So there's four key areas of work coming together at various stages, and I'll talk uh, about those now. One is a global privacy framework, um, a standardized encoding of consumer privacy signals, and then what are the rules, the best practices, the codes of conduct. Number three, auditable data structures. How do we put together data that can be tested? And four, what are the tests, the methods and processes we use to test and provide evidence of accountability? So on the global privacy uh, front, uh, this is a technical framework. Uh, Tech Lab has been fortunate to work with IED Europe on, on teeth, the transferring to consent framework for GDPR. And then we've been working with IED US on, uh, um, on their approach to the, the local uh, uh, CCPA regulation here and many other state, it's state by state yet. And now we're working with Canada on their regulation, which was just released, an update of that was just released here shortly. And then uh, uh, other regions we're working on as well. The idea here is uh, we've got a great basis of work. We need to bring this together into a common framework that every company can understand at, at runtime. Uh, uh, what's the region? What's the signal? And what do I do with it? Um, and we can do this in partnership with the different regions um, to take their interpretations and, and encapsulate that uh, within code so that uh, every uh, uh, citizen in their interactions with first parties have privacy choices offered uh, and we can encode that into a standard format and then all parties can receive those those privacy strings and know what to do. The key thing is reduce cost of compliance for all industry members globally while easing uh, compliance at the same time and being able to rapidly adapt uh, this framework because we know regulation is just going to continue to evolve. Uh, so that, that's pretty key. Uh, um, and uh, that's an efficiency play as well, economies of scale, because uh, no one wants to spend a lot of money on compliance. We just want to be compliant and innovate for revenue, right? Second thing is the accountability program. Um, on that very same sort of uh, um, area, it's, it's important that we establish for ourselves standards of conduct for what does it mean to have access, privileged access perhaps even to to act to, to, uh, for user IDs and personal data. And we want to set something up that, that sets up this uh, a clear, broad distribution of understanding of who's in good standing and, 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 and why. Um, and there's a number of components in here. Uh, we take a, a, a blanket approach that applies uh, internet-wide, global-wide, is going to be important, and as well as the ability to support regional variances as well as uh, lo local programs as well that we can uh, bolt onto um, because we need those seals of trust within each market uh, as well. 
and, and, and all the good actors, of course, really want to lean in and establish that, that, that line that shows that they are uh, responsible uh, here. So um, we, we want that to uh, happen. And number three is, uh, how do we evidence all this within a data structure? Uh, how do we create standardized, uh, tamper-proof, uh, traceable signals that go all the way through with data structures that come out the other side? And, and by the way, how we work with identifiers and data today already evidence itself with logs. So how do we capture those logs uh, and put them into common data structures that can be communicated and tested uh, um, at an industry uh, repository level uh, that generates log level proofs uh, with an open data stream so that everybody, everybody gets to know. Uh, it's, it's something that perhaps the regulators could look at to, to, to see the report card. Different people could contribute to this uh, 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 report card. But we need the data, and number three is about what is the data that we need to gather across uh, all events, all transactions, that flows all the way through the supply chain one side and back um, for all parties. And then what do we do with that? We want to establish testing of this. Minimum testing um, is to make sure that consumers are offered the appropriate uh, privacy choices to their region, to their jurisdiction, um, that they're recorded correctly by the first parties, uh, and then pass from those first parties to all of the, the vendors that they work with, and then all the vendors that they work with um, are recording that as well, propagating that, uh, and complying with all of the privacy signals, and then aiding in the security from illegal and unauthorized use. Uh, and and, this, and this, this testing framework can help surface that, and we need to surface uh, not only uh, vendor to vendor uh, um, as a B2B value proposition for our industry, but also our industry to regulators, and this will help. Our industry to browsers uh, and browser OS platforms. Evidencing adherence to consumer privacy preferences, shining a big light into the black box of our, of, of, of our supply chain is going to be very important here. Uh, so we're working on a number of these things right now, in fact, the, what schemas involve. Uh, the sampling uh, uh, methodology here. What minimum sample amount can we, and, and how do we develop a, a common ID that can, uh, that we can sample those transaction IDs uh, for a single ad that flows through multiple folks within uh, the supply chain. Um, uh, codes of conduct, of course, in partnership with uh, uh, policy organizations. How do we operate and run this program as an industry? Uh, and so that we'll have a lot of this stuff together in Q1. Hope to do a road show uh, for you all um, in uh, perhaps as soon as mid-March uh, to say, okay, here's what we have. Uh, but those of you involved with your local groups and, and Project REARC with, with, with JJ will have a heads up and will have the, uh, obviously the opportunity to influence um, uh, well in advance. So we really appreciate uh, all the opportunities for, for regional influence and perspective um, as we design this. Um, on the addressability front, uh, just do a time check here. Um, uh, we're, uh, we're focused on a number of these areas. I think what we see a lot of demand for and certainly a lot of talk about is uh, an authenticated consumer provided identifier. And how do we use that? How do we uh, enable a consumer provided signal uh, with privacy and accountability across the trusted supply chain. And, and that is uh, making sure that there's responsible use of those uh, identifiers. If it just is another way to execute on cookies where data is getting sprayed everywhere, that will not work. And that is what the privacy engineers um, are, uh, that's what they expect from us is a workaround that actually decreases consumer privacy. Uh, we want to show that the consumer is in control um, and their relationship with first parties that they trust. And those are the terms uh, that all must abide to. And an and, and N number of third parties can't just, <coughs> excuse me, uh, get in the middle there. They can, <coughs> oh, I get all choked up, you know. Uh, we want third parties to be able to execute on, on behalf of, of, of trusted first parties without all the unauthorized tracking uh, and data collection. Um, and so this is 
in the context of, of uh, the Trade Desk and UID2, as well as other great uh, solutions in place and market today. LiveRamp ATS is one I'm sure you, you've heard of, uh, and, uh, and there, there are others, and there should be others. Uh, all of them, we think, and we're working, uh, we're trying, doing our best to work with all of them to set this up as standards so that all can, can uh, uh, go forward um, and, uh, uh, and do the right thing for, for consumers and for us as businesses. There will be cases where there's no ID. Uh, we, we have to understand that. We don't have um, a, a right to an identifier every single time. Uh, and consumers may just want to be ghosts. So we have to have some ways of, of, of fueling an ad-supported free experience for the consumers who choose that uh, when there's no ID. And so contextual, leveraging the aboutness of a page, a site, an app, a stream, and the context in which an ad would be served is very important. And then having the seller define that, pass that on a standardized, ba standardized basis through open RTB, for example, uh, to buyers and allowing that those transactions to happen at scale. So we're getting real close, uh, uh, been working pretty deeply with Prebid uh, on this, where we write the specs and then they're, they're writing code to go ahead and deploy this out to a lot of publishers at, at, at once. Uh, our, count, our content taxonomy, an existing asset from uh, Tech Lab is very important here, as is OpenRTB, which comes from Tech Lab as well. Uh, additionally, and a close cousin to this is seller-defined audiences. Sellers will still have relationships uh, and identifiers with consumers uh, on both the app side, the stream side, and the web side. Uh, they still have something, and so they can develop um, uh, uh, interests um, and capture audience segments. That really helps to establish that within a taxonomy uh, uh, and a process that that can be passed through OpenRTV uh, uh, at scale to buyers and allow uh, transactions uh, at scale. Uh, and so that's part of this as well with, with, with Prebid. Um, and the key assets there are, are audience taxonomy. And since uh, all the buyers will, will want to understand, okay, what's under the hood of this audience segment? Data transparency standard and data label, very, very important here. We want to be very open uh, to, to buyers or any definition of an audience segment, not only within the B2B space, but increasingly B2C for consumer transparency. Uh, uh, how did, was this segment formed? What segment am I, am I in and how did I get to this? Uh, B2C and B2B value of uh, actively enforcing standards around uh, inclusion in a segment and how those segments were, were, were built. Uh, uh, lastly, I'll say on this, on this front is communication of this is going to be extremely important. Simplifying, there's a lot going on here, a lot of moving parts. So we sort of thought about it as, okay, there's third-party addressable um, or it's not third-party addressable. Within the first column is there's consumer-provided IDs and what do we do there in terms of standards and best practices, um, how do we solve for specific use cases like measurement, what services uh, uh, can be offered as an industry utility uh, to support a, a lot of these key use cases, what compliance programs can help prop our whole industry up. And, you know, in all of this, really the end goal is uh, innovation. Innovation, allow companies to flourish and innovate uh, with consumer privacy as a strong foundation. Um, and then there's not addressable uh, as well. There's innovation that's needed there um, as well. So defined audiences, con contextual, um, on-device on uh, audiences is done within the W3C environment, and that is something that is, uh, uh, we're, uh, well, we'll give you an update here shortly, uh, but we're actively involved uh, within the W3C uh, on that front uh, as well. So key here is we don't have the whole communications down yet. We're still tr trying to figure out how do we all come together and tell a simple story that everyone can, can you know, because simple helps everyone get behind something. Um, um, rather than uh, confusing. So um, um, I have a keen sense of the obvious sometimes. Uh, okay, so here's where we get into some other states of play that we think are important to call out. Uh, and the first one we'll talk about is the, the UID proposal from the Trade Desk. Of course, there's a lot of commercial offerings uh, in place uh, today, and in, in strong ones at that, that focus on uh, uh, a user-authenticated uh, ID that is still owned by the first party who has earned that. 
and there's different approaches uh, around this in commercial. Well, Trade Desk has come to the fore and say, uh, we'd like to propose something that is industry owned uh, and open source um, um, and fully secured in that we'd like to propose that this is open to everybody and independently governed. Uh, and so that was something that, that really uh, speaks to us. Um, and so uh, we invited them to come in and within phase two uh, to, to propose what they were looking at. And we went through a full uh, month of uh, in September uh, within an industry, um, hundreds of people coming together to talk about this and what's needed for this. Uh, and, uh, and they were excellent. Uh, they really heard the feedback. Uh, sometimes the feedback wasn't so uh, friendly, uh, but they heard every bit of it and they made some changes to the core uh, designs um, that I've just recently had the, the, the privilege of, 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 of looking at. And so, uh, you know, based on that month in September, they came to Tech Lab and said, okay, how, how can Tech Lab support something like this? Um, and we said, okay, let's think about this. We came back with, okay, here's, here's how we think we can help support this program. We don't want to be in a position to mint the IDs. We think the IDs, these, uh, these uh, encrypted IDs should be done within each first party, not as a, a centralized utility. Um, but we can aid in open source governance. We can aid in bringing the industry together around uh, standards of best practices uh, for authentication uh, that, uh, that this UID2 can follow and, 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 and really be, uh, maybe even be first to, to, to market with support of. Um, and then encryption is important. And it's not, it's not just coming up within uh, the ID space, but in all kinds of different things of, of passing important bits of information from publisher to, to, uh, to buyer and, and in reverse, that makes for tamper proof. Um, and so encryption really means, okay, how do we make sure that this is a legit signal? So there's a number of different areas where encryption comes to play. And we thought, well, encryption, uh, we think Tech Lab ought to be looking at this together uh, how do we support encryption as an industry across multiple use cases? Um, and so we're working with them on that. We've got some ideas and we'll start a new work stream on this actually um, in 2021, um, a security work stream. Then it's, uh, we believe we, we've totally aligned on trusted ad ecosystem, uh, what they're doing there and the need for accountability and compliance as a gating factor to access this UID too, this, this user ID and be able to use it. So we're already working on that. So we're bringing those streams together and, and we're working on that. And then of course the data transparency standards and services, um, they do have a consumer facing element part of their proposal. Uh, and in cooperation with many of our partners on the self reg front and on the policy front, we, we wanna help see what we can do to pull that together as well. And, and our perspective, which we shared with, with them and many others was, uh, the, the area of identity and data and privacy is so closely scrutinized right now uh, that we have to really couple this to, to the venues that uh, are leading the standards in this area. The, a lot of the policy discussions, um, um, uh, not from a policy standpoint, from a policy interpretation into standards, um, but we have those relationships where we're seeing that, that uh, uh, play out. Um, and then the privacy frameworks, the tech frameworks for uh, ascertaining compliance to privacy settings and all the different parties that we're working with. I'm, I'm not sure anyone is working with more industry bodies than we are. <clears throat> so um, we're still working this out and, 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 and hopefully in early Q1 we'll be able to announce something. But in the meantime, uh, you know, they're, they're doing some great work over there at Trade Desk and we re really appreciate their, their, their work and their, uh, and they're obviously setting up partnerships with really important other companies that are putting heads together in, in and around this important area as well. So we're fortunate to be working with all of those folks. Um, another area is the uh, update uh, uh, or is the partnership for responsible addressable media. Um, and just to give you an idea of what this is, um, this was where uh, shortly after we had, uh, announced Project REARC, which is the tech standards uh, 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 full on tech standards focus here. Uh, you know, we really, we've been talking all along with some of the key other trade organizations. Uh, and some of the other trade organi organizations said, where, uh, where are you strongest and where are we weakest? And, and where uh, we really needed some more help was in uh, um, uh, reach across executives. Uh, tech Lab 
we do a great job with executives, but it's technical executives. Um, and so we wanted to leverage a number of organizations that have reach with ex, um, you know, executive sponsorship of key important initi initiatives, especially the CMOs. We really needed to hit the CMOs. They're not uh, paying attention to tech standards right now, um, um, oftentimes, um, and some of the CROs. So we, this is part of our partnership with uh, the all about uh, IEDs where we get access to a lot of this, uh, the platform and the publisher CEOs, but we needed, you know, the WSA was someone we needed, the ANA, the advertiser and, 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 uh, uh, pub, um, and marketer folks. Um, and so WFA is, a, uh, is an organization of organizations, um, essentially on the marketer side of things. Um, and, uh, and so we brought together a lot of these folks um, and said, let's, you know, this, this is important. This is really key to getting uh, the whole industry involved. And, and so the working groups that they set up, um, uh, we form the technology standards um, uh, but then there's the business practices uh, working group uh, that is assembling a compendium of priority use cases uh, right now. There's the policy group, which is looking at a lot of the policy in and around this. Um, and then uh, not yet formed, but will be important uh, starting next year is communication education. Education is going to be key once our industry comes together around uh, the set of standards and what this means to consumers. We need a broad campaign that every region and market can have a piece of and make part of their own communications, um, you know, as, as this rising chorus of important voices. Um, so the, the business working groups has been first out of the gate with a, a lot of work uh, in, in October uh, and November um, uh, with 61 uh, companies uh, meeting, uh, they met four times for three hours each time um, over eight weeks uh, and generated just a ton of perspective and great work, enough to where we had, oh, 240 pages, I believe, of work. And so now December is about, okay, let's consolidate, let's, let's reduce the tonnage here um, and really narrow down to, to more distinct use cases. What, we're, what this group is aiming to do is uh, by early to mid-January, um, be prepared to pull this together and share with a broader audience. Um, and at that time, we, we'd love to, to share and, and have IEB Australia, um, uh, you know, uh, assert its leadership role in, in, in that region um, and really collect a lot of feedback. And, and not only Australia, all the different regions of the world um, that uh, we hope to, to take this to. Um, so lots going on there, uh, and uh, we're involved in this every, every single week. Um, uh, just as we are also involved with W3C. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to do was uh, kind of talk about all the different proposals. Uh, W3C is, of course, as I said on the outset, it's, 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 I mean, it's the standards group that wrote all the standards for the web. The cookie is a W3C standard. The web is a W3C standard. Uh, so, you know, and CSS, uh, HTML, all the building blocks for all web experiences is based out of W3C. Uh, and uh, so, you know, Chrome, when they announced Privacy Sandbox, they chose W3C uh, as a venue uh, to have the specific web uh, uh, discussions on, on their open source or on their open proposals um, to improve uh, the web. So, um, you know what we're what we're watching for uh, is where the uh, you know this is really important to look at. Are Apple and Google, Firefox, or any other browser going to lean in and cooperate with each other in this area or not? That is a key question that we're looking at. And so far, there's a lot of discussions, but we don't have uh, Apple uh, jumping in with Chrome. It still seems to be a bit of a commercial. Um, uh, battle as opposed to a full-on integration uh, and co collaboration. Uh, but we are seeing some really interesting proposals play out, and um, you've probably uh, heard a lot of activity, Privacy Sandbox, and there's a set of proposals within Privacy Sandbox, and then there's been other proposals, like Turtle Dove was one within Privacy Sandbox. Then you may have heard of uh, Sparrow from uh, Critio. 
and Turn from Adderall, uh, Dovekey and Parrot from Magnite, and all and all and, and all these other ones. There's sort of a uh, avi aviary uh, bird theme to a lot of these for some uh, crazy reason. Um, but I wanted to boil this down to you a little bit because it's really difficult to follow this. And I want to like help reinforce what the takeaways are here. Here's what you need to know. Um, and there's no conclusions with any of this, but here's what you need to know about where the conversation is going. It's about where's the data and who controls the final auction. And then how do we continue to feed AI machine learning models because computers are just much better uh, at making decisions um, at scale, you know, at, 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 at billions of, of, of decisions a second than humans are. Um, and so we want to, you know, that's a big part of this. And, and so <clears throat> I'm going to go through these proposals a little bit, starting with, okay, here's how the auction works, hugely, hugely simplified. Uh, I go to a view a, 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 a website or an app, and that triggers an auction. Uh, with uh, multiple parties uh, with in multiple uh, al algorithmic decisions and auctions in the middle before I finally get the, the ad. But uh, <clears throat> the, the publisher um, is ultimately has the technology to, to make the final decision uh, today about one, what ad is, is finally uh, showed based on a number of rules at, that, are, that, that cascade. Um, and this, this flow um, is represents also all the data flows that are used today within machine learning across every one of these uh, different uh, uh, hops in the supply chain. Well, <clears throat> Turtle Dove came along and proposed that let's rem like we're removing the ability for third parties to to basically capture any IDs or personal data. So their approach is no IDs, no personal data, no need for trust at all. Uh, okay, how do we rebuild targeting? Turtle Dove was a targeting proposal, <clears throat> or think retargeting. Um, take the you know the shoes the shoes that you just looked at following you around in the um, uh, in ads uh, scenario. This is a case that Turtle Dove the a use case that Turtle Dove was trying to approach, and that has so many applications for so many of us. They thought, okay, uh, when I'm looking at those shoes within an app or a, a stream or a browser. <clears throat> um, and then uh, that, that information can be stored within Chrome, uh, and then when I go to a separate publisher, um, then Chrome has that understanding um, of that interest, and they call that the interest group uh, data. So they store the interest group data, and then the publisher auction happens as normal for contextual auctions. Chrome would then run an auction uh, uh, to these parties using interest group data that in no way uh, um, uh, surfaces any personal data. You know, no one knows who the user is at that point or what data. Uh, they just know, hey, here's an interest group. Do you want to bid on this? Um, <clears throat> and, and then the browser makes the final decision in this. And that was a problem uh, for many. Wait, the browser holds all the data and the browser makes all the decisions, well, that sounds like an lot, awful lot of power for uh, the browser and uh, a, a, a Google one owned at that um, to, to do. So Sparrow came about and said, let's take this decisioning and can we agree on an independent gateway third party entity that removes control from Chrome um, and can we do this in a way that that, that is an area of business, that that is a role in business where uh, this can be done without any privacy uh, leakage or, or, or consumer privacy um, issues. In this case, the gateway would hold the interest data and run the auctions, um, and, uh, and that would come from, from, from Chrome. And so now all the ads flow through the gateway, um, and, that, then, and you can imagine a number of companies would want to be that gateway uh, uh, as well. So that triggered the next... Uh, stage of the proposal from Google that said it's sort of like a counter uh, uh, offer. Okay, uh, let's t we'll give you the gateway, but here's what we want to do with the gateway. The gateway becomes a simple lookup table. So you can use the gateway to store uh, whatever bids you want for the interest groups, the, the shoes, or, you know, and really the interest groups are defined by the companies that have direct relationships with us. 
So as we do things, uh, those those first parties that we visit can feed those interest groups and say, and they can be arbitrary, uh, but then just say, hey, when I see someone in this group, uh, I, this is what I want to bid. And so those bids can be wrapped up in this in this in this key value server, it basically takes the gateway and turns it into a key value server that it sends those back to Chrome um, and Chrome still makes the final uh, decision. Uh, and then uh, then, you know, uh, there was further uh, great work done in this case by uh, AdRoll uh, and Magnite that said really the publisher is making a ton of decisions here that they have to make competitive exclusions, you know, brand safety decisions around what ads they want to show, what ads they'll allow. They have to make the final decision here. So we'll counter again with uh, let's, let's go with that sort of uh, uh, lookup table, but we think there's a way to have code run at the browser and they're thinking specifically around pre uh module that uh, 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 can, can assist uh, in this. And so that header bidder has private access to the interest group bids uh, through these fenced frames um, that, that really disallow any sort of tracking. And so now um, that data and that auctions can still be done with configurable controls by the publisher because they're running uh, the header bidder. Uh, but they can't they, they they can't get any data out of it. But they can um, they can clear the auction um, while uh, going uh, while complying with a lot of these rules. Um, and so that that's where we are. So there's still discussion on 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 these areas. The last couple of weeks of discussions has been really focused on how do we feed the uh, machine learning algorithms uh, and all the trails, all the data trails that exist today. Um, where can we put that data and allow uh, machine learning uh, um, and aggregation points that really focus on specific use cases of letting machines optimize campaigns, optimize delivery of traffic, um, optimize uh, to, um, uh, uh, towards uh, you know clicks and conversions, um, and also there's a ton of machine learning to identify non-human traffic and to aid in security and make sure and, and brand safety issues as well. So we need that data. Uh, and so that's a big, there's a, been a number of, uh, of uh, proposals on that front um, uh, just, just, you know, just recently, which there's a lot of air, uh, activity in that area. So that all, all really, really good stuff. Mean, and that's within just the, um, uh, the web advertising business group. There's a W3C privacy community group uh, where the browser vendors, all the browser vendors are coming together to discuss critical proposals um, outside of Chrome proposals, but just really focused on how do we eliminate all tracking threats um, completely, like get rid of tracking. They're really focused on getting rid of, of all these things and not really focused on they're not focused on the business, the advertising use cases at all. Um, they're focusing like on first party sets. When you have one company that owns five websites, uh, they're looking at how do you limit tracking across those websites, uh, uh, for example, and what are the rules for allowing cross-site data where it's, it's really the same ownership? Um, is, can you, or do you just lock it down? Um, how do you, uh, provide signals to the browser of a logged in user event where I've logged in in one place and then there's, you know, and this is sort of the, the, the Facebook, if I'm logged into Facebook and then I go someplace and there's a fake Facebook like button, having the browser say, hey, wait a second, they're still logged into Facebook and this represents uh, an opportunity for Facebook or fill in any number of the blanks there, login or, or widget to uh, gather data from that great for conveniences and experiences, they want to shut that down um, um, with sort of storage partitioning, cookie alternatives, uh, fenced frames for uh, HTML frames for anything that happens within a frame, really making sure that there's nothing that can happen within uh, embedded documents um, and the, the, the embedding page. Uh, and then uh, paywalls as well. So just a, a ton of activity in the W3C front 
um, really with being led by now by privacy engineers who um, many of whom don't understand um, and don't respect advertising as a, as a, uh, as a, as fueling a lot of the ad supporting experiences. So really a, th a threat to breaking a lot of the business activities. And, uh, and that's, that's what we've got. I covered so much here. Uh, my apologies um, and my congratulations uh, uh, for, for listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's rubbish. That's fantastic, Jordan. Thank you so much. I mean, I personally really loved the, uh, the latter slides too. We're del delving into a bit more of the detail and it must be exciting for you now that we're, we're into the proposal stage and getting hands dirtier stage. Um, so certainly from an IAB Australia perspective, you know, where you know that we're here to help uh, educate and do the, the, the comms piece in terms of progress. And, and we have relationships with the, um, the relevant bodies here, the MFA and WNA that, that uh, represent um, advertisers and agencies. We collaborate with them a lot, but we also want to be able to launch out of IAB Australia a working group um, dedicated to Project REARC and extend that invitation across the region and if, if we were to do this in the new year um, with a more technically minded and focused group what what areas would you want to see us focus on and contribute in well we as an industry are coming together now around standards so you're getting in at the right point and we need the influence uh in those standards not only on the business use cases and and variations uh but the technical standards themselves um, and critical area, right? It, it all comes down to uh, identity, right? And that's a challenge that we all face uniformly, but there are some uh, variances in business activities. And the, the biggest one is, is of course, uh, policy, regional policy and regulation uh, in those use cases. So uh, huge, huge, impo hugely important uh, that all markets, including uh, yours, get involved while we're in these uh, um, uh, development phases. And then uh, what's really uh, fantastic about my experience in working with different markets around the world is uh, you have uh, really tight groups of folks who are used to working together and making things happen. Uh, and and, and you, 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 know, you folks have that uh, really well done there in Australia. So the go to market and the push uh, for taking uh, these standards and, and kind of building off the foundation in terms of innovation and the flavor of, of how you take this forward uh, really quickly to support your local market. The go to market is really, really key here. And you have the opportunity to, to help build that foundation and then just and then just run. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's something we really look forward to. And, and we're going to look at it from a, the, the technology perspective, as as mentioned, um, but also the legislative, what the obligations are. Um, and that that will vary across the region, obviously, by by uh, market, as you've seen elsewhere. Um, so the the collateral will be made available. Thank you. We we have actually shared some of these um, some of these views in previous blog posts to members, but this is a bit more detailed. So we will scrape some of these slides from Jordan, make them available um, retrospectively on the events page. Um, worry not. Um, so there's a pick, there's a question from Richard in terms of the general public feeding into these proposals. Um, I mean, I don't want to answer on your behalf, uh, Jordan, but I think due to the due to the intellectual IP that's being shared by everyone, making that just generally public is isn't isn't a possibility now, um, but will be once once resolved. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, there is something that we can do now. Um, and I'm, and I'm telling uh, as many people who will listen to me that all of our press releases, all of our messages on this important area of identity and data, uh, you know, for so long we've really been focusing on B2B messaging. All of our messaging increasingly has to be B2C. Uh, and, you know, just recently we had, uh, we were speaking in, in, a, in, a, in a board setting where uh, the CMO from Procter & Gamble said, you know, we really need, like, we don't go through a use case without having the consumer benefit, and we've made that part of our practices. And I think that every press release, uh, every, uh, every announcement, every blog post, um, all the important innovation that, that companies are doing, 
let's get used to speaking in terms of consumer benefit and consumer value and thinking of it as ourselves as consumers and our parents and our siblings and our mates. Um, and that is what we can do now. Um, and that changes the tone of how we talk. And then once we have some of these standards, I love the idea of a broad, you know, there was an element, there was a, a Got Milk campaign um, uh, here in the U.S. Uh, a, a number of years ago. Um, we need in market level uh, uh, advertising campaigns to educate consumers on their choices uh, and, um, and, you know, and, and, and really the benefit of an ad-supported experience. And here's how you support this. Here's what your choices are. And it's up to you in very, very friendly terms. And that should be region, regional flair. You know, let's, let's have some fun with it. Uh, this, this, this isn't a tech standard thing. This is yeah. after the fact. And this is where, you know, this is the fun part for your industry, your market to come together and go, let's do a campaign to really help educate consumers and regulators at the same time um, and get creative. Yeah, particularly with that open value exchange that we so often talk about, but it's still a little bit of an afterthought, right? We're getting it. I think we're getting better at having the consumer privacy obligations up front. But in terms of you know the interactions and particularly the controls that people will hopefully have moving forwards, that does need to be thoroughly tested, and that that will be interesting part of what I assume is obviously uh, phase three. Well. Thank you so much, Jordan. You've been uh, so supportive through this year um, with us. Thank you. We uh, well, pleasure has been mine. Yeah, you, you've uh, thank thank you to all of you at, at Tech Lab and all of everyone for collaborating in a number of events that we've been putting together this year. It's almost come as a surprise. A number of webinars and Q and A articles and everything else, and actually totting up the numbers. Um, Gay and I were looking at it. Look, you know, you, you guys are contributing on average about once a month. To us in some form of content so uh, thank you so much I know it's late over there in Seattle so uh, but thank you again Jordan that was um, that's fantastic and thank you all collaboratively for for getting involved in everything we've done this year particularly these events and even just attending them and I hope uh, that you can all enjoy uh, a glass of uh, uh, cheer uh, whether it's alcoholic but not alcoholic is it's entirely up to you we're certainly trying to get those members that spend, uh, give us so much of their time and effort on the various councils together uh, where we can, uh, both in Melbourne and Sydney, actually. So uh, hopefully we'll see some of you for a glass. And one day, Jordan, we'll, we'll get you over here uh, to sunny Australia to uh, to work on some of these projects with us face to face. And we look forward to working with you more in 2021. I like that. But as mentioned, thank you very much for everyone. We will be sharing the collateral. Look out for it. We'll, we'll uh, amplify that out next week. And uh, thank you, Jordan. Have a lovely Christmas. Cheers. You as well, mate.